Crawford. He can do what he wants. I, I don't need to sit with them. I mean, they're on the wrong side of the family. Oh, oh. I mean, you understand, right? I mean, it's... Whoa, whoa no, whoa, hold on. Oh, my God. Oh. Can I join? Is this an episode of Naked and Afraid, or Naked Attraction? <laughs> Fine. I thought it was like all gonna be about me. <laughs> they can stick around, I can join. What do y'all think? You know, let's do it. May, Mom, may I sit next to the demon? You may. Another round of applause for this beautiful cast right here. Hello. Gorgeous. Well, thank you for joining us. Let's go down the line and just, first of all, a question for me, then we're going to go to the fans. How are you enjoying Comic-Con Scotland so far? Woo! We love it here. Yay. Love it. Really special. Thank you all for bringing all of us out here. I know that the stinkiest of us is from the area, close enough. Oh. He doesn't have to fly across the Atlantic to go to his home country. Uh, it's a confusing thing. I mean, listen, I love the Scots. The Scots are the best people in the world, tell you that. Even if we are in a rainy cow shed just somewhere near Edinburgh. I mean, I was told Edinburgh architecture is something to behold. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> it's Beautiful. gorgeous. It is. We are so happy to have you guys here making memories with us, but I think we should just get right to the fans because we have a very loyal fan here. Just the one. Yeah, yeah just her. <laughs> the rest of them don't care. They're just waiting for the next panel. Right. <laughs> if you'd like to go ahead with your question, and if you guys have a question, come on up. We are going to be respectful of the strikes. I think you guys know that. You were briefed. No specific show titles, role titles, but make it random and fun. But go ahead, lovely. Uh, hi, I'm Roxy. Roxy? Hi, Roxy. Hi. What inspired you to get into acting? Uh, Mark Shepard. <laughs> yeah, when I, was, when I was like five years old, he was playing like a 75-year-old grandfather in a TV show that I had done, and I just thought I would like to be on a stage with him someday. Uh, kidding. Mark, what did inspire you? You came from a family of artists. Yeah, but I was a musician, and... My dad was an actor, he was in the Royal Shakespeare Company and stuff. It was had a, a, amazing watching him grow up through theater and then go to America and become a, an American actor. And I never wanted to be an actor because my dad was an actor. And then I did a play and that changed everything. I suddenly realized the telling of stories is my favorite thing to do. And I've been lucky enough in whatever my career may be is that the stuff that I know you guys like happens to be the stuff that I've been lucky enough to do and it's about the telling of stories and great stories and we spent you know we you got you what you spent 15 glorious years <laughs> telling a story and uh it, it's just a fantastic thing i think the genre of whatever we want to call it fantasy sci-fi any of those areas is where the imagination is and where the great stories are and it's always been more interesting to me than you know the one hour procedurals which i've done but it, it's always been the most fun. Monsters of the Week to, you know, great stories, epic stories about uh, people's travails in hell and heaven and on earth and all the rest of it. But I, I've always loved it. What about you? I just like to play, uh, dress up and play other people. You like to dress up and play to people? Play other people. Oh, play other people, right. Yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and that's what I get to do. I mean, I, I, you know, I got to be an alien. I get to be... <laughs> You know, I, like, when I did Star Trek, this show about space, um, they called, I know, God, it can't take me anywhere. They asked if it would be okay if they put prosthetics. And I was so insulted that they would think I wouldn't want them. And I was like, I'm not going to be on this project <laughs> if you don't keep put horns or something. <laughs> so I just love it. I mean, it's pretend. I love it. Yeah. Jen? Your Teen Choice Awards. No. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think what Mark was saying, um, storytelling and being able to step into different shoes and play 
characters and explore places and relationships that you never knew that you could. And I, I love that idea. I love, I love creating and, and becoming something else. Yeah, I, I, I think similar. When I was a kid, I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. It's a, uh, and I grew up in a place where never in a million years did I think I'd be able to actually travel to Scotland or wherever I've been able to travel to, uh, largely because of a show that we all met on. And so it was a way for me to explore different lives, different stories. And I was kind of, believe it or not, I was kind of a shy kid. Uh, and I found my way to explore different personalities all through the show we worked on. I've played like 15 different characters in it. Um, but it was just a way to explore places that I never thought I'd be able to go to. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Love you. We love thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good shirt. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for letting me come and say hi to you earlier. So I, I got a t-shirt to mark the occasion. For those who don't see, her shirt says Team Crowley Hellraiser. I, I did want the Winchester one, but it was sold out. Um. <laughs> oh, I love it. Please give me a high five. <laughs> So, um, my question for all of you is, if you could make up your own series, what would it be about and what characters would you play? Wow. Oh, man. Definitely wouldn't be two brothers that are, like, way too tall. <laughs> and then a bunch of other people doing weird stuff and just bothering me all the time. It would be one where I get to sit down and sort of just express my sage wisdom for half an hour. In a bar on a horse? On a horse. Maybe, on a horse. Great. <laughs> I, I like that idea. Um, I always wanted to play Lara Croft. Oh, cool. That's a video game. I'm allowed to say it. You're allowed to say it, yeah. Um, and then on this other certain show, they sort of brought me back to life, and I kind of played Lara Croft. <laughs> so there, I got to. Yeah, I think for me, I... And I, I'll admit, I've said this before, I think, but uh, I love scenes. I'm not really... I like watching stunt scenes and action movies and all that. It's not super interesting to me as an artist or a, an actor to do those scenes. It's sort of like, it's fun. You get to burn some calories and feel tough. I like stuff. I've, I've gotten to, to do scenes with each of these three actors beside me. Uh, that I really, at the end of the day, was like, oh my God, that was amazing. Like, that's why I did this. And when Mark was answering the question, I thought about a scene that he and I did in a barn. End of season eight. Yep. Uh, that just felt so special. Like, it, it taught me more about myself. And I've had similar scenes with Samantha and with Jen on different projects, uh, but that's really, I try and find something like that, where you can really get to the bottom of, uh, of what someone's thinking. Thank you. Ladies? Oh. Um, God, that's such a hard question. Um, I, I think going back to why you started acting and, and being able to um, be in places like Scotland and, and travel the world, I think a role where it takes you outside of who I am as a person. Like, in my day-to-day, -day, I'm cleaning up after kids and, you know, driving carpool. And so anything that can sort of, which I love that role, but anything that can also transport me to other places and, and creating, I don't know, neat, interesting relationships that aren't in my everyday make me excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, look at me. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mark's got it. Thank you, Mark Shepard. Thank you, Mark. What can't he do, right? Hi, my name's Robin. I was wondering what your favorite horror movie is. Robin? Favorite horror movie. Robin, thank you. Uh, we're going to try and answer this in a special way. It's a great question. Um, my favorite horror movie, if I were to try and define it as a horror movie, was with an actor named Jack Nicholson. Uh, it took place in an abandoned hotel. There were scary kids who spelled murder backwards on tricycles. 
Uh, and Did you say the book it was named after? Red Rum, Red Rum. Uh, it was very shiny. Let's call it that. Super. It was a shiny movie. Uh, but, it was uh, a book. I hope you... It was. It was a book. I hope you haven't seen it yet because it'll give you nightmares, but when your parents let you see it, uh, I hope you do. Anybody else? I refuse to watch horror movies. She's too scared. Correct. So she does horror TV shows sometimes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that way she's able to kind of see what it's like. Uh, Shep? Uh, there are so many great ones. I actually think that's really interesting is that the older ones, the ones that were around the 70s and the yes. early 80s, now we're into so many jump scare cuts and we're into so much like really trying to scare the hell out of you. I don't find it as, as gripping as it used to be. I mean, I remember the first time I watched a certain movie about plumbers in space. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, right, yeah. Right, right? Yes, yes. The first time when, you, when, you know, and a certain Ridley happened to direct it, uh, knew where the being was the entire way through the film, and so did we. I mean, I think the construct now is not as clean and as honest. It's about literally making you jump out of your skin. And we're kind of bored with that, are we not, a little bit? I don't think they're doing as well as they did maybe five years ago. But if you go back to some of the classics, they're great stories and, and truly appalling characters, you know? More what, suspense than horror. Yeah, what about you? You're, you're from a different generation, slightly. What is your, are you a member of the Screen Actors Guild? <laughs> I think that's a no. So you can talk about whatever you want. What's your favorite horror movie? Which one? Babysitter Killer. Say again? Babysitter Killer. Is that what it's called? Okay, I gotta watch it. All right. I'll watch it tonight, try and scare my wife. I'm very annoying when I watch scary movies. Very. Very annoying. I talk the entire way through it. The entire so, time. Yeah. She's trying to not be scared, so she just keeps talking. Yeah. My wife's the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even when we haven't seen a movie, I haven't seen it. As soon as a scary movie starts, what's she happening? Keeps... Why are they doing that? Why would yeah. someone do that? Why would they walk through that door? Don't they know that they're on the other side of that door? Do you think it's the neighbor? Do you, do you think, think it's, the, it's the neighbor? Do you think why would they be married to each other if he would treat her that way? Why would they do that to each other? And I'm like, I haven't seen. It. I didn't write the movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet either. Why are you asking me? <laughs> yeah. Stop talking, please. So. And I love you. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Great question. Hello from Australia, Mark. Sam, Jen, and Jared. Um, I am in Australia, I'm a mental health social worker and I'm a counsellor in mental health and that's what I've been doing for 30 years and it's exhausting. And I was wondering, as a person also who has to be on, and this is for Jared but also everyone else, but as a person who has to be on, it's for Jared, Jen, Sam and Mark, <laughs> for a person that needs to be on all the time and really, really, I guess, kind and nice to people, like I do, how do you do it when you just, I mean, you were nice to me in the street the other day, and that was just a moment that really touched me. But how do you do it? Like, how do you guys do that when, you know, you're having a hard time and you need to be down and just have your own space when everyone needs you, a piece of you? I, we have a saying in our family that Jared talks about a lot, and that is, kindness is free. It's really easy to be kind so lead with kindness and so I feel that always lead with kindness and advocate for yourself but it's easy to be kind yeah amen to that uh, I think of things kind of like this way no matter what I do I love to work out but I love to sleep I love to eat but I love to be hungry I love to be here but I love to be by myself uh, taking a walk through a city I've never been to and so what I try to do, no matter what I'm doing, let's say I'm doing a workout. Uh, you know, we did a marathon a few years back, and that's tough. It's, it's a, it's, you're running for several hours a day. It sucks, but I love working out. And so I was going, like, why am I so, why am I so angsty to do this? Why am I so hesitant? And so I just try to remember how much I enjoy that part of it. I feel like everything is a sacrifice. You can choose... There's positivity in everything. And sometimes you need to be negative. Sometimes you need to go home and go, Ugh, my boss is an asshole, or my neighbor's a jerk, or I ate too much, or I didn't eat enough, or I'm jet lagged, or something. And then you go, like, as a for instance, being here, I feel jet lagged, very, very jet lagged. 
Uh, but I love seeing y'all's faces. I love the fact that we're in Scotland. I never thought I'd be able to go. So I try and focus on that, meeting new people. And that brings me back up. Uh, I love sleeping. I love napping. I didn't sleep well. I didn't get a nap. But I'm so excited to get to do this with y'all that I try and focus on what I'm excited about, no matter what I'm doing. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, Sam. Please. I was just going to add that all of that is primary and I whenever the, I'm having the hardest moment it I just I try to find gratitude for anything something anything and generally it's the whole life I get to live but sometimes it can be something as small as I'm in a position where I can make someone feel good or I love this sun coming through the tree or I love just it can be I call it my silver linings and it's the smallest thing can turn your whole perspective around because Negativity can be a habit. And as long as you can just literally take one deep breath and blow it out and be like, I'm really okay. And then you can just move forward. For me, that helps. It's, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I think that's, that's the right way to look at it. But I come from a very odd place in it. I'm sober a really long time. I'm, and so I had to learn a whole bunch of things in order to keep myself in a place where I didn't lose my mind uh, through many years, 30, coming up 34 years of sobriety. So it's a very odd place to be. But no, 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 seriously. And I said that in Scotland, that's even funnier. Um, Wrong but, city. No, but, but seriously, I used to think, and I spent my whole life chasing love. I used to think that I felt love by receiving love. And I wondered why it never fulfilled me completely. And I discovered very slowly and quite difficultly that I feel love by giving love. And if I, if I choose to not, and to me the opposite of love is fear. So if I'm in my head and I'm afraid about what's going on or I'm walking about and I'm thinking about what's wrong in my life, I'm usually living in fear. But when I, when I see somebody, as my wife reminds me, this may be the only time that person ever gets to see you, ever, a chance encounter. It's not a chore, it is a gift that I get a chance to be a human being and the joy I get by giving love or being kind or doing that, it's, it's a freebie for me. It's, it fills me up in a way that as much as you guys show me love all the time, <clears throat> that doesn't fill me up as much as it does for me to be able to be kind and enjoy you and see your beautiful faces. Amen. Thank you. Beautifully said. Hi there. Hi. Um, so I know that you all have animals back home, so I was wondering if you'd tell us a bit about them and if you have plans to get any more. <laughs> Well, I'm looking at you. <laughs> we have a lot of animals. I think I'm pretty cool with them. Uh, I'm fine with where we are. My wife, however, how would you answer that question? <laughs> well, uh, we have six chickens, three dogs, two goats, two poitou. Pua two donkeys and three Highland cows that we get next week. <laughs> All in a small apartment in Burbank. All in our apartment. Uh, what should we get next? Uh, five fewer chickens, <laughs> two fewer dogs. Um, just kidding. Uh, we also have bees, which you can't really pet. And no. three children. Or count. So I can't count the, the bees. Uh, we gotta get, we gotta get, we've, we've had horses before. We've had, you know, I, yeah. I think, uh, let's get some more horses. Yeah. Let's get some more horses. I'm cool with that. Y'all? Can I, I want a horse. Um, we have two dogs, uh, two very small dogs. We have some kind of tiny horned lizard that looks like a dragon with no wings. I don't know what is, some kind of gecko. A, some kind of leaf, split leaf tail, I don't know. I've never seen it. It hides in the leaves all the time. And then we have two sugar gliders. Oh, wow. you we also don't see them. They're not nocturnal. <laughs> but you can take them out during the day and they're very sleepy. They're very cute. And they do like, 
Yeah. Glide around the house. They're very cute. Mark? Dog. <laughs> now at the back, at the back of my garden is the Santa Monica Conservancy. So I have rattlesnakes. I have tarantulas. giant skunks, tarantulas, um, coyotes, bobcats. I mean, all sorts of things that I can't have small animals around. Oh yeah, massive raccoons. Raccoons, possums, yeah. raccoons with no predators. Yeah. You know, skunk. They came. To, we had to trap five skunks in six days. They, you can't kill. You don't kill skunks. You have to move them. Yeah. The guy that came to pick them up because I've never seen a skunk the size of this. <laughs> it was like, what are these? Are, are, you, are you sure it wasn't a black and white dog? No, no, it was a skunk. <laughs> okay. Because there's no predators for them in the back. They just live and eat everything. And oh my gosh! It's like so. I've got wildlife behind me. Yeah, we we did we did just recently we adopted a termite. Uh, we we named him Clint. Uh, Clint eats wood. Oh, don't oh. awe me. Come on, Scotland. Oh. oh! I was working on that. Work a little harder. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Uh, thank uh, thank you. you for your question. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Uh, Hi. My name's Tia. Um, Hi. Sorry. Um, what is your favorite part or like factor of your character's personality that you play? Curiosity. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna stick with that. Curiosity. The character that I, I played on the show that we all did was very curious. Yeah. So it was, let me see what's going on, what else could be going on, what is that person going through? So I was able to explore a lot, much like non-actors and actresses can do. When you meet somebody, if you haven't learned something from them, then either you haven't known them long enough or you haven't been listening, you know? Like I, I, there's a quote that I love. Always assume that the person you're talking to knows more than you about something. Not that it's important to just learn from somebody every single time you talk to somebody, but listen. You might learn something and become a better person, a uh, better version of yourself. So curiosity. It's a good one. Uh, for Mary, it was her ferociousness. She was just fierce. Yeah. And, and she was not fireproof. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm going to go back to fierce. <laughs> I think I think I could cat well I always said there was two types of characters that are worth playing in history one's the guy that sells them out before they leave the planet which is the original Dr. Zachary Smith in the original Lost in Space when he was a terrorist which is hysterical but it's kind of brilliant and the other guy is the last sane man in the universe and the last sane man in the universe is really Eddie Albert and Greenacres so I think I'm either playing Eddie Albert in Green Acres or Dr. Zachary Smith in Lost in Space. Until I saw, um, I saw the Time Bandits and I realized that most of my performances are based on David Warner as evil in Time Bandits. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it, it's that, that incredible optimism, but being in the wrong. That incredible optimism, if it's going to work my way, and then being always smacked back by circumstance or good or... Or any of the things that I really despise. Good. What was what was Peter Sellers' name in Being There? Uh, being There. Being There. Oh my God, Peter Sellers. Yeah. What was his character? Chauncey Gardner. Chauncey Gardner. Yeah, I want to play Chauncey Gardner. It's actually Chance the Gardner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chauncey yeah. Gardner. But that, it's that beautiful optimism and that simplicity of it. But you're right. Curiosity is a, a giant factor in that. It's a giant factor in all the characters that that endure because they are on a journey, they're on a path, and we get bored with them if they're not looking, right? We get bored if, if they're just doing the same thing week in, week out, you know? What like, was your favorite quality of your character on this show? That's what I said, internal oh. optimism. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. For no it's reason true. whatsoever. It's true. I had no, Despite all that person had the no contrary. reason to be optimistic about <laughs> anything at all. Never it never out. went the way he wanted it. Fair. <laughs> so true. Yeah. I mean, to follow th that, I would say curiosity as well, because within any character, you have confines of what the writers wrote. And I feel like always 
your character is always driven to do more and to find their objective and where are they going in the path. So within those confines, you know, that curiosity and that growth and that wonder as they move along is just so fun. Whether, you know, they want to rule the world and they, or (laughs) in either capacity, they have a sense of wonder and optimism to them that I love. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi, um, Vivian. Um, has anything weird or scary happened while you were um, filming a certain show? I, I'll do you one better. Uh, our hotel room here has a ghost. <laughs> Not lying. We both checked in on Friday and felt. You think it's a him or a her? I think it's a her. A her. Um, we walked in. Yeah. And I was like, there's someone behind me. And Jared's like, no, there isn't. I said, yes, there's someone behind me. Yeah. And, and she then, wants to tell us something. And he's like, yeah, okay. Well, we, I think you're in good hands. Like, yeah. I'll handle this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. We also, we flew in from Texas on, we left Texas on Thursday, landed Heathrow on Friday, then flew to Edinburgh and drove in. We had a long flight and we knew it was going to be an awesome long day weekend. And so when we finally start going to bed on Friday, we're still feeling stuff. The curtains are moving in strange ways. And I finally just say this out loud. I just go, hey, can we talk Monday? Like, can we sleep tonight? We'll, we'll talk Monday, but I'm not going to be listening tonight. Like we're jet lagged. But I think the ghost, I think she, she may know of a certain show, so she's not gonna mess with us. You know? I know all the tricks. She uh, was fangirling. Yes, she was fangirling, maybe. Maybe she was fangirling. Well, she fangirled all over our room because our room flooded. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Our room flooded. <laughs> yes, our, our, our bathroom was- Our bathroom flooded. Our bathroom flooded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All good though. Here we are. <laughs> we made it. We made it. Safe and sound. No, but it was scary. It was really I mean, uh, it was it was a scary moment. It was interesting. Yeah. I did I did film a show though, going back to shows. I did film a show in, in that was on sacred indigenous land. And a lot of weird stuff would happen while we were filming like in the middle of a take the car alarms, even though they weren't locked, all of a sudden would start going off and the horns would start honking and it was pretty wild and creepy. Yeah. We'd love a good ghost story. My, my last house was haunted. Like, I kept, I just had a baby and I was tired all the time and I kept seeing this like person out of the corner of my eye and I thought I was hallucinating. And then my neighbor upstairs in the duplex said something about we hear this ghost and I'm like, oh, I think I see it. And my husband looks at me and he goes, you've seen him too? Oh, and the same thing, like why it's, my son's electric toys would turn themselves on in this one corner where I always saw this guy and he looked exactly the way I described. My husband saw the same thing. Like it was, there was no doubt. And then after years, he kind of disappeared. But then we, our fireplace stopped working. Like the smoke wouldn't go out. We had the chimney sweep come three times. On the third time, he's looking with the flashlight. He goes, it's just so weird. There's just like this haze. And I'm like, we're good. Close the flue. We're done. Never use the fireplace again. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. God, thanks he for the mean. nightmares. Just, That's terrifying. But it was real. Yeah. 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 Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Good, you? Uh, good, good. <laughs> right, so uh, my question is um, to do with a, a certain show that involves a blue box. I think Mark knows what I'm talking about. If yeah. you're, any of the rest of you are familiar with it. Yeah. So my question is, is that, because I cosplay the Doctor, that um, if I could take you on a trip in the blue box to anywhere and any when, where would you want to go and why? I got a story about this. Are you talking about Comic Con? I've got a story about, <laughs> about this fella here. So we were at a, a Comic Con in San Diego, and he decided he wanted to walk the floor, which now requires six Warner Brothers 
security guards to walk in a V in front of him to make sure he doesn't get mobbed. But we're going in and out of doors and we get to it. And where he wanted to go see was the blue box. There was a blue box at the BBC America thing. So we, I took him over to the blue box and we tried to put him in the blue box and he was too big. But it's bigger on the inside. He was too big. I couldn't get inside. I was too he big. didn't fit in the TARDIS. Yeah, they saw, there was a big line to take pictures next to it. And so Mark walks up and they're like, oh, oh, y'all are good. You want to come see it? I was like, hell yeah. And so we go and I was like, I can't even get inside to take a picture. Uh, true story. This is what, 10 years ago? Uh, so night, no time travel for you. No time travel for me. But if I could, uh, I would like to see the great pyramids of Egypt be built. I'd like to see how that happened. Anybody else? Anybody with me? Come along. All right. All right. I'll try and fit in there. We'll go on a ride together. All right? Let's do it. What about y'all? Time travel anywhere. I'd go along with you. you. What about the Colosseum? We know a lot about the Colosseums, right? Uh, That'd be fun. I want to see the pyramids marble, getting built. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where would you, you forget go? the Colosseum was actually coated in marble. It looks so incredible now, and we're so used to it. Yeah. But when you go look at it, and you go, oh, no, that was all faced with marble. To see it and was glory? stolen. Yeah. Wow. All the marble was stolen. It's incredible. Where would you go? Uh, I mean, you're the doctor. Where are you taking us? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, if, I, um, if, I was, if I was to take you guys anywhere, I'd, I'd probably take you to see because of, the, because of the show that I love you all for. I'd probably take you to see, um, I can't remember his name, the man who made a deal with the devil to, to play guitar good. I can't remember what his name was. Yeah, uh, Robert, anyway. Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson. I'd take you to see one of his Crossroad Blues. shows because that... That, I would enjoy that myself. Actually. That'd be awesome. Good yeah. call. Yeah, good call. Uh, you, you could help him as well. That's a great. What's that? And you could help him out with the. With the I, I, I would love to. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I've helped before. I can do it again. Yeah. I was uh, there. Yeah, you were. I don't know, right? <laughs> Mark. He was at the Crossroads. That's the original Crossroads yeah. demon. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I'd want to go to early 18th century uh, Europe. Oh. Oh wow. And just see. No window the, toilet. I don't have to live there, Mark. I just am visiting. <laughs> no indoor toilets, no like hot and cold Cement, running water. Yeah. She likes to brush her teeth with sugar, <laughs> is what she's trying to say. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, great you question. have a good day, all right? And yeah. you. You too. We have time for one final question, guys, and they've got to get to photo ops and things like that. So go ahead. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, I've seen videos of uh, other Comic Cons that you guys have been to and gone on about pranks going on either during or like on set or off set and I was wondering what's the favorite what's your guys favorite prank that you've played or had played on you uh I know too much I know <laughs> yeah Mark knows a lot I know way yeah. too much yeah uh our, our pranks are really pranks of convenience you know we don't usually plan them out too far in advance unless uh it's Misha directing an episode or something. Um, the final words you said to me that put a chill down my spine after the 15th thing you... First of all, Misha directs an episode. They shredded his script three times. <laughs> Jensen pied him with a cream pie. Perfectly beautiful gentleman's pie job, straight in the face. Filmed it, it was fantastic. He pied him so hard, I think it broke his nose. Took 45 minutes to clean up the I set for the amount of shaving cream was ever. I mean, there, was shaving cream the on the boy. there was shaving cream on the ceiling. No, and then the worst thing I ever heard in my life is he came oh up to me, he goes, hey, Shep, I don't know what. He goes, how much do you think Misha's car's worth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh! <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, we were thinking, yeah. we were. So there were a lot of ideas we had that we did not do. Because we were like, so... When you shoot TV shows, you can call companies and they have cars you can have in a car accident. You know, there already been, there's no engine in them. And so he had his car at the time. And I was like, if we look into it, maybe we can find a similar enough car that we can paint it his car color. And when he comes out, we can have like a wrecking ball drop on it. Not his actual car, but we have to pay to have his car towed and moved, have the new fake Misha's car towed, and then a wrecking ball. It was, it was not going to be worth it money wise uh, but it would have been damn funny and hopefully we get a chance to do it again uh, and maybe we will this time 
thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Let's hear it for the beautiful Jen, the beautiful Sam, the handsome Mark. Thank you all very much. And uh, for this guy. Oh yeah, me too. Thank you. Thank uh, you so thank much. Comic Con Scotland, keep the noise going for this amazing cast. Genevieve, Jared, Mark, and Samantha. Let's get a photo op and make some noise for these amazing, amazing actors. There go the phones, yes. There's your Christmas card, everybody. <laughs> Give it up one more time for Genevieve, Samantha, Mark, and Jared. Thank you so much for this surprise.